<laughs> can you see me now? Yeah, my screen here. Yes, we can see your screen. Thank you, Stefan. Good. Thank you. So, okay. Well, um, when I start a project like this, uh, an illustration for a book cover, the first thing I do is actually to read the manuscript and start making notes and numerous of sketches. And um, reading simply give knowledge and understanding of the story's concept. Uh, knowledge about all the characters and so forth. And that's that's really, really important. Otherwise, it, it's, it, as we all know, illustrators, it's very easy to start drawing before we know the story, and which is kind of backwards. Uh, so, um, as I said, I make numerous rough sketches in my ske sketchbook very quickly to start the creative process, and it can be basically anything. Just Sometimes I just draw a, an outline, close the sketchbook, move on, and then come back again. And here's, by the way, the, um, the very first rough sketch I did for the, for the cover. doesn't say much, does it? It says Villa, which is the, the name of a boy, because this is a kid's book, and the age range is 9 to 12 years of, of age. And um, I read the story, and I knew it, it was about a boy, and he had uh, it was going on vacation with his father, who was divorced and met a new woman. And the other woman had a daughter, and then of course Vila had his friend with him as well. So there were three characters that I had to uh, think about for the cover, but also. Um, the big monster. The book is called in free translation, it would be Ville and the big monster fish or something like that. And we can all see that the monster fish is here, of course. And um, But before we move over to actually show you how I draw and paint in, in photo paint, I like to run through other highly important settings to be made in photo paint, which are very helpful when planning my illustration and composition of it as well. Sorry. And that is, of course, we start with color management. Color management is important as it decides which color profiles to use all across this project. Because I'm going to show you how I work first in photo paint and then make the layout in Coral Raw. From concept to final print original, basically. Some may find color management difficult or like a, a different universe. But it, based, it although color management is a complex uh, issue in itself, it could be very, very easy. And um, so I'll go to tools. And I can tell you, of course, that usually I have these settings already set, and especially if I do the same kind of projects for, for a month or something like that. Well, don't change it too much, but I'll sh but sometimes we have to change the, the, the color profiles, of course. So I go to Tools, Color Management, and Default Settings. As you see, just quickly, you can make color management settings for a specific document, but I usually just go for Default Settings here. Click here. And in Color Management Settings, basically for this kind of project, Remember, I'm doing an illustration for, for, for a book printed on paper, so I don't have to think so much about the other stuff going on here. I have to think about SR, uh, the RGB color space because when I'm doing an illustration in photo paint, I always use RGB color space and later on convert to CMYK before we move over to color wrong. And the other color profile I need to think about is a CMYK. In this case, I use coated for Grout 39. And in other regions, other countries, you may use another uh, color profile for CYK. But this one is the one I use. And please ask me later on why I choose for Grout 39, because that could sometimes be a, a story of its own. And just go quickly back just to show you one more thing. I use sRGB for this one, and this kind of illustration I'm going to do, it's perfectly okay to use my default 
RGB color model. But for some images, it would be better to actually use the Adobe RGB 1998. For some images, it's better converted to a CMYK color profile, just to have that in mind. But for this one, no problem, sRGB works perfectly OK. And uh, let's see if I can just move this dialog a little bit to the other side. Guidelines, as you said. I'll turn this image off here so you see it a little bit more. Although guidelines is something that, that I finally set up in Core Raw before sending it to the printer or the client or whoever is going to get the, the, the native PDF or print original. In PhotoPaint, I still use an approximated guideline setting, which is this one here. It shows, and this is actually very good for me when I'm planning my illustration. I'm going to turn, OK, start. And this is, um, it shows the, the front with, uh, and the spine, which is going to be this one here, and the back. What's, the spine is something uh, really important, because the, you all know what the front cover is and the back cover is, but the spine is very important, because at this stage, when I start an illustration this early, I would probably never know the exact size of the spine, and it can differ. For example, right now I have a client that it goes, the, the size of the spine goes from 8, 9, 11, and 12, and back and forth, and making me totally crazy. Uh, and, and it's millimeters, of course, in my case. And the spine is actually how many paper pages, how, how many pages is going to be in the book. So, but because at this time I don't know exactly how many pages it is, but I make an approximation of it here, and it's very helpful. And it's also helpful because many books that we look at today, they may have a black or other full color back page or side, um, sorry, it's all black. But when I do illustrations for covers, and the publisher like my idea as well, I like to have an illustration that basically goes from the front over the spine and over to the back. So I like to have a full-blown illustration all over. That's also why setting up the, the guidelines, as you can see, the guidelines show an area out here. And this is, at this stage, although I don't necessarily know all the pages of this spine, I do know there is going to be a wraparound cover. And a wraparound cover, for those who doesn't know, is the wraparound in this area here that we see on the south side of here is, and in this case it could be an approximation of 15 or 20 millimeters. It is the, as we all know, we print the illustration and the, and the cover is printed on a paper. And the paper will be folded to the inside of the book so this area will not be seen by the reader or the buyer, but you, I have to take that in account um, very much. And because I make an illustration that goes all over the whole, the whole area, it's good to have already this, this time in my work to set up the uh, approximated. It's not the final, but the approximated. So I would know, for example, whatever I draw, here on this side here, we'll never, no one will really, really see it, but I have to make it anyway. And so, but as you understand, it instantly gives me a feel of where everything is going to go, where everything is going to be placed, and how I can work with illustrations composition. So, um, that said, I'll close this little thing here for us now, so get that off. When I have this set up, usually I've already used, um, comes first, but I'll show you this one here. Every time I start a project, of course, I have to use 
some sort of settings. And uh, so we, what we always do is to create a new image and use that in this dialog. Obviously, we write the name of the, um, the document here, the image here, and the size. Uh, here is, I'm a millimeter guy here in Europe, so I use the millimeters, the, the width and the height. And also important is the resolution. And doing a printed, for this kind of work, it's uh, basically always le at least 300 dpi. Uh, so um, proposed that for some reasons I could use 200 whatever, but for a printed book, it's 300 dpi. Another thing that I, that's it's really nifty and really good is that this book, Villa, for example, that was related on the it was the first book. And we already made a second book, which is really nice. And I hope the third book, of course. But it means that because I have already, when I'm making uh, the first book, what I do is to actually save the settings that I made. So when I go back, I just write a new name here for the, just for the sake of it, I'll just put that one here, and click OK. And what now happened is that all the settings that I made, or or should I make, I should say, is saved. So the next time, let's say we close that one. So next time I go back, I make the book number two, as I've already done. And just go here to this little fly out here, the preset destination, tick stuff on, and all the settings comes up again, which is kind of cool. I like it a lot, to be honest. So click that, turn it off, back here. But um, moving over to actually drawing and painting in photo paint. Again, this is the very first rough sketch that I did. And you saw the second one that I did as well. But at this stage, it's also important when you're planning a project like this to send something to publish it pretty early try to show the concept, the idea of the whole thing. So this is actually, no, that's not the, actually the one, but this is actually the one that I sent to the publisher. I colored it a little bit and just sent a simple JPEG or PNG image. And um, this one, as, as I said, just sent to the publisher, it just buys from all the stock and so on. And I continue doing this, uh, sending um, sketches like this during the whole project. Um, so we were early on very on the same page concept wise. Uh, now let's see here. One of the things that you can actually use is when you're sending sketches like this um, and you want to show, just show very quickly uh, another document that's really, really good. It's color proof settings. Color proof settings is, um, we always have to remember that color proof is not a hard proof. So, but when you're sending it, the first JPEG that I sent to the publisher, the, the, the question of color wasn't so important because it were very much pencil or, or ink or whatever. But the, the more we go into the project, somewhere we have to talk about the colors and they have to understand a little bit how the colors are going to look and all that. So what I did, is to use the color proof settings docker and um, as you can see here is photograph 39 again and then I just exported it and uh, the soft proof and sent an image to them and what happens is actually that the, the soft proof is uh, as I just want to point it out really it's an approximation it's not an exact science but but it's an approximation it's not a hard proof but some clients early on they want to they don't want to have to pay for hard proofs uh, in the beginning maybe at, at the end of the project just before it's going to be printed but in the beginning they just want to have a, a hunch well that's how we work in a way to give a hunch of how the cost is going to look and because i have no idea how their screen looks like and they don't know how my screen is calibrated and all that so it's good to have some some sense of how it's going to look and so, well, 
do dig in a little bit and look at the colorful setting stocks because that's actually really a good one to use. Okay. Um, now let's see. I'm going to close this a little bit here one and show you a. Let's see. That could be one. Yeah. There. Yeah, that's the one. It's actually the, the first character drawing I did when I came closer to show how the, uh, to know how the actual guy, the kid, really was going to look like. And um, what well, you'll see later on that I, I, I didn't use the pencil drawing on the cover of the book, so I actually copied my own uh, pencil drawing, so I actually drew the whole thing in photo paint, but I have a rough sketch. And um, but I want to just want to show you still that here's a scan image and and I just want to show you a little bit quickly here because let's say so, sometimes I use a pencil drawing for the cup draw covers and like that but as we see it, it looks kind of dull and and, and boring so because of that I would use a uh, a lens object. And you can find the lens object down here. And one of the lenses that I use a lot here, of course, is the tone curve. I already made a, a tone lens curve here, so I um, just want to show you that when you make a lens, you can always click, sorry, click, 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 open it, and edit it. Uh, for example, here, making it a little bit brighter. The good thing with lens objects is that they are non-destructive in contrast to if you would go here for example it would be more final but using the lens object here you would be able to to add and remove lens objects as, as it places you in the world. One of the uh, when it comes to coloring a, a, a drawing you can do it in numerous ways but one of the ways I do it is using merge modes and I just love merge modes and here's one if dark is one. And another merge mode that I use a lot illustrating uh, coloring illustration like this is multiply. I just want to show you the difference between uh, multiply, how that works, and how if darker works. If you look a little bit closer, see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Basically, um, um, I could have done this a little bit right, you could see a little bit more maybe, but, but if you look closely, the, the outlines of the pencils doesn't seem to be so much affected by the, the actual effect that I put, because it more looks like, uh, let's see if I can show a little bit more here, when I draw, it looks like I'm drawing underneath the pencil, doesn't it? And it's really, really good, especially if you want to have the, um, the outlines un un not destroyed, so to speak. Um, many years ago, I just, when I started to know um, photo paint back in 1998, uh, or even more back, I used the mask too. Uh, but much more is, is the beauty. But okay, so, but if I would use Multiply, for example. Multiply would do something totally different. Maybe you see here now that the I'll take another color for this, so we show it a bit more a different. And I'll just remove a little bit here. Let's see if we can just quickly erase a little bit here so we can see the difference. This is really cool. Um, and if you're into comics and coloring your comics, multiply and if dark is the thing for you. Uh, now let's see here, we're just taking a, uh, take that color. Hopefully it's not too, too intense for this one. Um, so let's see here. You see now what happens? It still leaves the pencils of the, uh, the pencil drawing uh, undestroyed, so to speak. But what happens is that it affects, and it, it maybe it's not a correct term, but it um, program-wise, but but it looks like if it's coloring the the pencils, pencil drawing as well, in contrast to if darker, for example. No, no, not, not that one. But you see, if you see here, for example, 
So you see the difference. Hope you see the difference here. And one other thing is one of my loving life in Photo Paint, of course, is the brush setting stalker. And if you're a heavy user of Coral Paint, you will probably love the ease of how you rotate the brush nib and how you squeeze the nib. Uh, it's done, you can do it in Painter, but it's easier in this program, I have to tell you that. And in the brush checking stalker, you'll find a lot of nibs, uh, basically all nibs that you have installed. You have the default ones that you get from Corel, but also if you would have added some of your customized nibs, which I usually do, but I, I cleaned my computer the other day, so I accidentally removed my customized nibs. Otherwise, you would have seen them down here. Um, and um, here, of course, you can just change the size of the of the of the nib, or just use the shift tool, for example. It's also good drag it up and down here. And um, well, there's a lot of secrets in the brush settings doc and I so but okay, just so I don't forget anything. And now well, let's see here. Uh, if I can show a little bit more here. Keep that. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So take time. Ah, uh, now let's see. Uh, where do we have that other one? Um, so, and of course working with an illustration, one of the other things you can do when you, um, uh, let's see, there was that now here, there it was. Another thing I think it's important to, to think about also is, and you're going to see in the illustration, uh, uh, the final illustration of this book, um, is that you apply the effects, but one good thing to do when you and uh, start doing the style of illustration I did for the book is to use the opacity slider as well. So you can we'll add an effect in the march mode and then you can use the opacity slider as well. In the um, in the illustration for the book I use a lot of uh, you can see it's a lot of water because of the fish of course. And Painting water you can do in many different ways. And I'm not going to try to draw the most perfect water now, but I just want to show you if you, by simply using the opacity slider, you see how you can quickly get a uh, more water effect. And just add something here. So just to show a little bit more on the final illustration that I made. Here for example. This is actually the, the, the illustration that I did for, for the book. And by using the things that are already shown, the, the merge modes and the opacity slider, and using numerous of um, of objects of um, and transparent objects, although you see here, here I use the opacity slider and the merge modes and everything. So you can come a, a long way with, with just those effects and, and tools that I just showed you. Not just, uh, I just don't run away too long about this here. Let's see, so. But, now let's see here. No. Oh. <laughs> Now how do you want to show someone something? You forget where everything is. Here it is. 
when you actually draw the illustration, uh, you have to convert it to C in Y K. And uh, to do that, it's very simple. Um, you go first. You go to uh, image and convert to C in Y K. It will ask you if you want to merge all the objects and Yes, you want to do that. So you just click yes. So you just combine them all. This one is now a CYK image. From there you go to file and then export. And here you see the color profile is still the same. And personally, I was used uncompressed, but it's a TIFF and uncompressed. I close that down because I already have one done. And then I go back there and you should save that one for you as well. And let's see, we can go to Chrome Roll. When you've done the illustration and you want to bring it into Chrome Roll, what, you, what I basically do then is to, again, I'm going to turn that off a little bit for a second. What you do is to you have a page, of course, and you set up the guidelines. At this stage, I basically know the, the, the final size of spine, finally, but it could still change, just to let you know. Uh, but what you do is to uh, set up the guidelines for, for, the, for the bleed and wraparound and everything. But additionally, uh, what I do is that I make transparent objects that I have very temporarily. I'm, before I make a PDF of everything here, I just delete them, but I have them as an extra help because when you import an image, um, it's, for me anyway, it's easier to see if I like the way the illustration is played in Coral Draw. So with these two here, one, two, you have the front, the spine, and the back side. It's um, so you see here, for example, this part of the leg and this water and everything, and all the work that you put down, or I put down, it's not wasted, but no one's basically going to see it. But uh, that's the wrap. I can get a more visual picture of it, how it's actually going to look like. Well, but another thing that I use, of course, when I is that I, you see here, for example, it says power clip. Um, I am a heavy user of power clips. And you probably understand then that I just love the new power clip. And during a project, an image, uh, I like power clip, power clip for many reasons. One of the reasons is that power, an image, an illustration I make, can grow to incredible sizes, actually, because the, the publisher, the editor, and sometimes even the author or someone or myself sometimes just feel that the something has to be changed. The image maybe has to be extended to make larger, take or take less size, or shrink it, or or something. Just do something to the image. And by having a power clip, uh, I know that when I close here, for example, everything that's inside the power clip will be printed. But inside the file clip here, this one here, this part will not be printed. It's very good. So sometimes I have to do adjustments, and it's very easy to just uh, make a temporary, or not a temporary, but I just select the, uh, the image and then click Edit Bitmap. I won't click it now, but if I would click this one here, and let's say I would like to add some something to the illustration here or remove or whatever I want to just make some adjustments. I would just select it here, especially if it was some minor stuff or uh, I would just select it as I said, click edit bitmap. It opens PhotoPaint, make the adjustment and in PhotoPaint click save and this change that I made is saved on this image of the illustration. It's not saved on the actual original image illustration I made in PhotoPaint. It's done for the one solely here in, in Corridor, and sometimes that's really good. 
and um, of course uh, now let's see so one of the first tools that I actually use in Core Draw is the rectangle tool in my case and the rectangle tool um, just drag out drag it in size and then convert it to a uh, power clip and from there on I just choose no hairline or, or anything any borders to it so it's just a on there and um, Uh, let's see here. And, and another thing also is, let's see the press the time here a little bit. So when I have imported and placed the illustration in the power tip, hammer transparent objects here as hell, um, and I'm, either I get a, a, a barcode from the editor or the, uh, the publisher, or I make it myself using Core Draw here. Place it in, put it in place, and then um, add the text here on the spine, uh, and the title, uh, the logos of the publisher. This publisher has no specific logo here, but just a name. So I'm like a little nifty logo down here. And then I finally get the, the text that's going, I'm going to turn, turn this off a little bit here, so you see it a little bit better. And then I find, get the text. Here's the, on the back side that says, Billy is an ordinary guy who likes it. Has an extra file in it. What I do is, <coughs> it's also fun. actually give me Yes. Stefan, sorry to cut you, but it seems that you have been cut for about 10 seconds. Could you repeat what you have uh, mentioned, like in the past uh, one minute? Thank you. Okay, okay I'll try to figure out what it was. Um, well, um, what happens here is, uh, now let's see, um, where was I? <laughs> well, before I send the image or the, the whole cover to the, uh, to the printer, what I don't do is I don't take text like these here um, or I don't send a, a font file or anything to the printer because one thing is uh, the printer may use InDesign or Quark whatever it is and or I don't like to lose control over the text because sometimes actually sending it to a printer and someone is working at the printer office sitting there designer themselves or, or something like that and they want to move around the title and the text um, and that's of course awful. So what I th then do is actually um, I select, simply select the text. Here you see it's Arial, nothing fancy, but I select the text and use on my keyboard Control and then Q. By pressing Control and Q I convert it to a curve. If you for some reason don't like to use the shortcut keyboard. <laughs> you can just find it here somewhere where it isn't. Yeah, here convert the curves. And here you see there's the shortcut control the key. Control the Q. So I do that basically to every text object that I have in here in this book here. And when all that is done, um, I send it to the uh, to the printer. And when I do that, um, I go to, um, so let's see now, we have the, yes, so then we go to publish to PDF, and in publish to PDF, please ask me afterwards if you like, to, but sometimes the term printable PDF comes up, and and if the printer haven't told me specifically to use any specific settings for the PDF that they want to use, I usually select the PDF X3. And just a quick thing here also. Now we'll see that it two inches in this, this document. It's because 
there are a lot of fonts that I haven't converted to text uh, to, to curves. So that's why it's making warnings about that. And I have a hidden but printable layers and all that. So it's good to, to look at these tabs here. One of course is the, the issue tab here. If that happens, you just go back, go out of these dialogues, go back to Core Draw and fix everything in Core Draw and then back to publish the PDF. Or in with X6 you can use export if you like that. Export and then choose PDF. And when all that is done and you're finished, and I think I'm not taking too long. Uh, I think I have to speed up a little bit here now. I just want to show you that when the book is actually printed, yes, actually the book when it was printed. I'll turn off the guidelines here for you. And still, still for so still, please help me if I'm if I'm, if I'm short of time here, but. No, no, that's fine, Stefan. Um, I think um, you still have about between five to ten minutes regarding your presentation. Oh boy, I thought I, I was uh, I was losing time. So I speeded speed it up a little bit too fast there for you. I hope I didn't miss anything. Okay. But but here's actually the um, just to show you because you you just take a little bit of time. Here you see the printer original that you sent. I see the crop marks here and everything. But what it actually comes into your hand. The publisher get the books and they send a copy to you. This is the book, actual book. I took a photo earlier today. Um, so here you see the, the spine, the actual size that it got and the, and the font and everything. So the, yeah, that's it. That's actually, I hope I didn't miss anything. So what do you say, Cecil? Uh, I think I'm finished there, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you, Stefan. Um, thank you very much for all these uh, tips on your presentation. Um, so I'm starting um, to receive uh, some questions. So um, to anyone uh, attending the webinar, like it's really the right time to send me your question. Um, let's start with uh, some questions. So the first one, Stefan, why would would you not create your image in CMYK to begin with? Uh, it's a good question. What, I could say out of habit, but but not really. Um, but I well, I don't know if I have a, have a perfect answer for you. If it's some, uh, but I always just use RGB. Uh, that's. I, I just do that, and then I just convert it. It's not a, a big secret why I do it, but I guess when I started out, I just did it because I was doing so much uh, for the web or whatever it was. But I, there's no, I just do it in RGB. And RGB, for example, it has a larger color space, and I can I could dabble and play much more with that. And uh, but if I would work in Corel Draw, for example, I would I would probably use more the seam YK from the beginning, but using photo paint that always just use RGB. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Another question from Deb. Um, Stefan, you mentioned that you preferred uh, different tool over masks. What are what was the name of the tool again? Um well, uh, if if Deb was thinking about coloring um, when I'm uh, covering a drawing is if if that was it, it is because the masking tool when you're coloring the thing is when you coloring a drawing a hand drawing like that like the one I showed the a mask tool there would be so much work to actually get the mask to to, to catch everything or it would be a, a lot of white spaces or whatever. It, it would take much, much, much longer time if I was uh, coloring and drawing using the mask tool. So using the merge modes is, is uh, to me, it's, it's much, much better. It goes faster and, it, and, it, and it's nice to my outlines. So, so I hope that answered your question. Because okay. I used to, yeah, mask tool once in a, in a, in a long back I use mask but not, not now for these kind of work. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> question from Roger. I design telephone directories once a year. Do you know of a formula 
used to calculate the thickness of a spine based on paper weight? Wow. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing that what I always rely on, I had that discussion earlier today actually uh, with a, one of my publishers and the printer, is that kind of uh, stuff is given to me by the, by the printer and they know the weight of the paper, they know the how many pages is going to be and everything. So I don't have a form and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, but I, I don't work as a printer, I work as a designer and illustrator. So I, I, the, what I want to have is how many meters wide is it and everything else uh, is, it's not, I don't okay. think funny, but um, yeah, anyway, what I'm going to take, I've asked uh, to Roger to send me his email address and I may ask the question directly to somebody uh, in the Corel Draw Engineering team. Good. Um, <laughs> another question, uh, John uh, says, great presentation. And he's asking, do you use Corel Painter uh, or PhotoPaint more often and what reason for each? Um, I, bo I use both programs and I use uh, both Coral Painter and um, Coral Photo Paint since uh, beginning of digital time, I guess. <laughs> um, but the, mo the program I use the most of the two is Photo Paint and a lot of the work uh, that I do is goes much quicker in Photo Paint. It's, uh, I'm, of course, I'm more used to it because I use it every day, but I I, several days a week I use Painter as well, um, but um, I think that I think that just if if you look, if you're a painter user and you just saw for example one of the things that I don't like so much with Painter is the way to change the angle of the nib and the rotation everything. The, for me, it's less steps using Photo Paint, but also the the kind of work that I do in Photo Paint. I do so much work that I would not be able to do in Painter. So there was for many reasons I work more in, in Painter. Okay, Stefan. Um, just to continue on that question, um, uh, Mary is asking why do you use do you draw more in Photo Paint instead of Coral Draw? <laughs> well, uh, the, the, for example, this kind of illustration that I did this book, for example, I wouldn't see the reason to do uh, an outline drawing in for, in Corridor because the, the 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 whole style of the illustration, the the outlines, how they look and how they feel, has to have that feeling. So it, it's much quicker and, and better for me to do it in photo paint. That said, I use on on, on a year scale approximate. I use maybe Corridor and photo paint. 50% each. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm a heavy user of Corel Draw as well and I do a lot of illustrations using Corel Draw. But, but for this particular illustration, when it ha uh, to get a feeling of a hand drawing or drawing using my Wacom tablet, which I also love of course, it's better for me in my style to use um, a photo paint. Okay, okay thank you. Question. Yeah, thank you Stefan. Um, if um, Stefan, you want more details for one of your questions from Stefan, let me know, uh, still through the question panel. Um, another question um, from John Nats. Um, why did you cut the lines manually or not automatically by the print out for Cor of Corel? Of oh, can you ask that question again? Uh, yes. Which, <laughs> Why did you cut the lines manually instead of doing automatically? I, I don't buy the printout. When I print out, yeah, um, I'm. I don't think I understand the question a little bit. I would love to answer that question, but maybe if he or she could just ask ask that question a little bit more in detail, so I, I don't give the wrong answer. I'd okay. gladly answer it in an email if that would be possible. Okay, so I'm going to answer him. Um, um, another question from Melvin. What resolution do you use for any scan image that you bring into PhotoPaint? 
Uh, it depends, actually. If, um, for example, if I'm just using rough sketches, uh, as I showed, um, for this illustration, for example, I drew it entirely in, in photo paint using 300 dpi. But for, for rough sketches from a sketchbook, um, I would just use, usually it's 300 dpi to be honest, but I could use 150 or 200 or whatever because it's just going to work as, as a rough sketch. Sometimes I simply take a photo of my sketchbook with my phone and uh, bring the photo from my phone into photo paint, use it as a rough sketch, do the quick rough uh, drawings in, using my Wacom and delete the rough sketch and it's and it's gone. So, but usually my scanner is always 300. But if it's a rough sketch, just use it as whatever you please. But if it's going to be printed and you're going to print it, you have to use at least 300 dpi. Or print books don't go less than 300 dpi. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, to all the people, we still have about, I would say, five, six minutes um, for questions, so don't hesitate to send me more questions. Um, I have a question still from Melvin. Uh, will you talk more about color management, RGB to CMYK? Yeah, yes. Um, just like you, you, you may mention uh, some details, Stefan, but I would like to um, let Melvin know that if um, on coral.com slash webinars, um, she, she, uh, you can access to all um, webinars, past webinars, uh, the recorded sessions. And we did um, a color management webinar by a specialist. Um, his name is David Milisok, and he's um, an expert uh, in color management. Um, and it was for X5, but it's still valid for X6 because the color management engine has been greatly improved for X5 and has not been very um, has not been touched for X6. So this uh, color management webinar on quadro graphics with X5 is still valid for X6. Um, you can just uh, look at the recorded session. It's a one hour uh, recorded session. So at the end of the year we may do another color management uh, webinar. Um, so it should be available sometimes in November or December. So Again, go on uh, coral.com slash uh, webinars uh, in Coral Draw. You will see all the past uh, webinars, but you, you will see also all the upcoming webinars. So, Stefan, I don't know if you want to uh, give some details about color management RGB to CMYK. If I could add something, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, first I could say David Millerstock is, is my guru when it comes to color management, of course. Uh, so I, I would recommend see that webinar, but that, that's a really good one. And I could also say that if they have the box version or the, of course, the guidebook digitally, if there is, uh, if they have the X5 version, there's a really good chapter by David there as well. Excellent. Um, another question uh, from Paul. What brushes do you use in PhotoPaint? What are your favorites one? Hmm. Uh, I make a lot of um, customized brushes um, myself, but I really use many of the uh, several of the um, standard brushes in photo paint, and uh, one actually being the one that I use today. The uh, it's a standard solid nib, and it's the the brush. It, what's it called now? I have to open photo paint. Sometimes I just forget where everything is called because I use it every day. Uh, yes, here's a custom airbrush, uh, art brush, and then the solid nib here. But usually I I use, um, I don't know what the name here is, but I um, uh, it's, I know it's not the name of the brush, but it says 47 here. That's the one that I use a lot. And, um, and um, yeah, there's, um, there's a, a lot of good brushes in photo paint, but the uh, custom art brush and... Uh, my own customers. That's what I use. Okay. Thank you, <coughs> Stefan. Uh, because you are in PhotoPant, um, somebody is asking if we have a little of time and we still have three, four, five minutes. Can you show mm -hmm. us how you draw a quick sketch in PhotoPant? Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> so let's see here. Um, uh, okay, uh, let's see what I should draw. Here is uh, the custom art brush. There's a lot of stuff going on here, of course, you can use. And I just take the uh, okay. this one here. Sometimes I use the toggle. That you, if if you haven't used this one uh, for some of the brushes, it's really good if you can use that. But it's not a toggle here, uh, and uh, just draws. Oh, let's see here. You see that it gets uh, some edges here. That's actually the toggle that makes that. And if you take a, a non-toggle, you'll see that the it looks totally different. So uh, choosing toggle or non-toggle is could be very cool actually. Uh, this one using toggle looks like uh, drawing on a paper with a, a lot of grain. Uh, drawing something, what should I draw? I can, what I'm doing now actually is pressure harder and softer um, with a brush tool. Um, see, oh, it's a little bit sad that guy, but well, he's probably a very happy guy, he just haven't had coffee yet, I guess. Um, so, there's a face, I'll put some glasses on. I have glasses when I have driving a car. Nowadays I'm not, don't feel so bad about having glasses, but I remember the first I had glasses, that was difficult. And um, some hair over here. I don't know if that that's good for you. <laughs> Put the um, shirt here and the tie. Um, like that. Yeah. Stop me when you when you want. I I think it's good, and uh, I receive a comment saying that it uh, uh, it's very well done, and only just what uh, John wanted to see. Uh, he wanted to see your style, so I think uh, you did a happy uh, participant. Thank you very much. I'm happy to, to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Melvin is asking if you are using a Wac Wacom tablet. Yes, I am. I just used it when I draw this guy here. Okay. Uh, I use, yeah, I uh, presently use the Wacom Inches 3 uh, and um, today and sometimes I use a newer model, but Wacom Inches, that's one that I use. But if you don't have Wacom Inches and you use a band or whatever, that's perfect though fine actually and it so um, that's good too okay good uh, perhaps one or two more questions how do you access the tool or what is your method that you use instead of masks oh boy um, now that's a question again uh, when, uh, I stumble a little bit because when they say instead of a mask, I'm, if we're talking a mask here, of course, you can see on the screen right now we have the mask tools here. Sometimes I use the mask to actually draw stuff. You know, I just this could actually what I'm drawing now could actually be something for a scene in under underwater, for example. Just fill that with color, I guess. Um, but. What I showed today was showing how I make a, a, a specific drawing for this illustration, so I, I don't use mask for that reason. But I sometimes I use mask to freehand mask and, and draw a lot actually for that one. Especially when I do concept drawings for for commercials uh, or short movies. For example, I made a numerous uh, store watch again for a short movie going to be brought, uh, filmed this summer. Um, yeah. Okay, excellent. So, yeah. Well, we have a lot of very uh, positive feedback, Stefan. Uh, it seems that okay, people uh, have enjoyed the, the presentation, uh, very thorough. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Unfortunately, we are just about out of time. Um, yes. So yeah, uh, again, really a big, big thank you, Stefan, uh, for sharing some of your techniques um, today. Um, also, thank you everyone for your time and interest uh, in this webinar on Incorrect Draw Graphic Suite. Um, of course, if you would like uh, to know more information about Corel Draw Graphic Suite X6, or you can also download a free trial, um, just go online on corel.com slash coreldraw. Um, also, I would like to remind everybody that uh, the webinar um, um, will be record it has been recorded and will be available 
um, on corel.com slash webinars. Um, also, um, you will receive an email, uh, an automatic email, uh, letting you about the link to use to access the recorded session of the webinar. Um, so again, um, while I'm, I'm speaking, a lot of great um, feedback, uh, Stefan Marie saying, love the presentation, thanks. Richard Reary, or oh, hi Richard, um, said great job, <laughs> Stefan. So really, thank you, thank you, you yeah, thank you uh, to everybody for um, your uh, interest and uh, your positive feedback. And uh, so next month, um, oh, next month it would be Richard um, uh, presenting. Um, so uh, let me uh, remind you the, the date um, for um, Richard presentation. So it would be on July. 12th um, at the same time of today, um, so from 12 to 1 o'clock um, uh, in uh, Eastern uh, time, and so it will be Richard really, who is also our one of our core draw masters. Uh, he's a, a freelance graphic designer, and Richard will um, um, let you. Um, will show you everything regarding designing uh, apparel, decorating in Graphic Suite X6, uh, including adding 20 effects, working with colors on custom color palettes, doing simple color presentation for t-shirts. So again, Thursday 12th, uh, just go on Coral.com slash webinars to register. Uh, and so I wish you, um, thank you again, and I wish you a good afternoon or a good evening to everybody. Bye, Stefan. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.